So you should be able to see this on uh, as it's recording right now. We are live. Hallelujah. Glory, glory to God. We thank you, Lord Jesus. We give you all the praise, all the honor, all of the glory. We exalt your name because you are God and God alone. And besides you, God, there is none other. And so, Lord, we bow our heads to worship and adore you. We thank you for what you're doing, seen and unseen, in our lives because you are God. And, Lord, even on this podcast, we know that you're in control of even the airways. So we thank you that we were able to come on and and do this recording and welcome people, people that may not even know. It's all about spreading the gospel, the good news, or helping others who have different gifts and talents to come on this podcast, that AGS ministry, Tabernacle of Fire in you. So it's the fire of God. You are the tabernacle. You have your own meeting place with God. And we come to reverence him, and we come to say thank you for uh, our pastor, uh, Dr. Michael uh, ask you, a very humble man, oh God, but we thank you, God, for his presence. We thank you for Elder Seals being on the podcast and driving out of town. We celebrate life and we celebrate the graduation of our daughter-in-law, soon to be daughter-in-law, and getting her law degree, traveling mercy to my wife as she comes back tomorrow. And all of you that are driving, David Holmes, bless you in the name of Jesus. God, move us out of the way. And as people come on, oh God, let us be mindful of one another, O oh God, and let our ears be open, God. Open our ears to hear what you've given a pastor to teach us, to share with us, to reveal and to enlighten us, O oh God, that we draw closer to you in Jesus' name. I thank you for the humility that this man of God has displayed all through his life. And I haven't seen him in years, God, but I thank you because you can just sense in his spirit a kindness, a gentleness, a loving, caring spirit. So thank you for the shepherd's heart. Thank you for the man of God. Amen. Uh, this is your host, yeah. Elder Anton Seals. Elder Jennifer Seals is driving because she's out of town. So we want to pray for her continued safe travels as she's driving. Um, and we thank God for all of you. Um, praising God uh, for what God is able to do through the, the word of God. And tonight, our special guest is a young man that I had the privilege of meeting uh, years ago. I see uh, El Evangelist Tisdale is on. God bless her. Um, and uh, I got you on two screens, uh, Elder uh, Evangelist Tisdale. But I wanted to introduce my, my guest. But I want to just say something that that I, I'm amazed by, and that's that I haven't seen some of these young men in years. And I'm so grateful for the kindness and thoughtfulness um, of how they have reacted and responded to me. And Mike, I thank you so much for taking time out of your busy schedule as a pastor in Florida. Uh, to, to find time uh, to share in the gospel with me today and the people listening. Uh, is, is, and so we thank God for you. Uh, I want you all to know that our guest, his name is, we call him, he doesn't like to be called doctor. <laughs> but we try to get him used to that title because he just got it. But the amazing thing about this young man is his grandmother, If I'm and correct me if I'm wrong, your grandmother uh, basically spoke into his life years ago that one day, it was either his grandmother or your mother that told you you were going to be a minister, a pastor, and that she was going to get your doctor's degree. And you went on and pursued that. So I want to salute you and say thank you. He is a uh, do- Reverend Dr. Pastor. He calls himself Reverend. I call him Pastor Dr. Michael Askew. Um, uh, pastor Dr. Mike uh, has been a Presbyterian uh, m- a minister for 33 years. He is pastored in Morris, Morrisville, North Carolina, and Knoxville, Tennessee, Milwaukee, Wisconsin, Tallahassee, Florida, and he's currently pastoring at Gulf Beach Presbyterian Church in Panama City Beach, Florida. Dr. Askew is a uh, graduate of High Park Career Academy out of the south side of Chicago. In addition, he earned his BA from Lane College um, in 1980 a Master's of Divinity from McCormick Theology Seminary in Chicago, and and that was in 1985, was awarded a Doctorate of Theology just recently from the House of Lord Theological Seminary in Moreno Moreno, Moreno Valley, California. His doctorate or doctoral dissertation was on the many faces of laughter in the Bible, which he hopes to be published before the end of 2021. And we thank God we're going to speak that into being. It is so. You don't have to go to no self-publishers and all that. I'll send you all the information because I've self-published two books. So praise God. You don't have to pay for right. that. And so you can find more about him on facebook.com backslash golf.church. 
And you can see this on all what I've just read is also on the Facebook page, uh, AJS Ministry or Elder Anton Seals or Elder uh, Jennifer Nelson Seals, one of those, uh, you can see that information there. Um, and so we wanna welcome you, uh, Brother Stanley Nevels, my prayer partner, we wanna welcome you as well. Uh, David Holmes, we wanna welcome and thank you and um, your company, your guests with you, your family member, uh, and we just thank you for uh, being on with us tonight. And I see another number, 8775, 815. And I don't recognize it off the top of my head, but uh, we want to welcome you as well. And so um, our topic today, our topic today, uh, 8775, you want to introduce yourself real quick? You got to take it off mute, though. Hello? Okay, well, we're going to go ahead and get started. Stan, I, you need to drop your camera down just a little bit. Yeah, that's better. So we praise God. And I want you all to know today's topic is the many sides of laughter in the Bible. And one thing I did forget to mention, he is the father of four children, three sons with one son who just passed away in 2020. And he also has a daughter and he's a proud, proud grandfather of nine. So Pops, we love you. <laughs> Granddaddy loves you. We thank all of you for being on with our pastor, our friend, <laughs> our Reverend Dr. Michael Askew, uh, pastor uh, who has given his life to God. And we just want to make sure that we welcome you and welcome any church members from Gulf Beach Presbyterian Church in Panama City. Those that may hear this or hear it later, we want to acknowledge your congregation. Praise God that they have an awesome a man of integrity as the pastor of their church. So we're gonna turn it over to you. And um, and you can give, I have your slides behind me. So if you need me to share that, just tell me when, if you wanna share some thoughts. So we turn it over to you for the next 50 minutes. Uh, that'll okay. take us till about eight o'clock. And we sometimes go to 810, so it's okay. Let the Lord okay. use you, hallelujah. All right. Well, thank, thank you very much, Coach. Elders Seals, a uh, man of God himself, and, and, and truly a warrior on God's battlefield. Uh, I thank God for you and your missus for the work that you do and for continue to let your light shine and uh, all of the wonderful things that you continue to do. And I thank God that God has blessed you in the midst of your, your health challenges that you have faced. But you're still with us and you're still blessing us in so many ways. Um, Amen. Let me, let me just give uh, a little bit of uh, background so, so that you know. In the Presbyterian Church, uh, they call the Presbyterians the frozen chosen. And uh, so uh, we, we, are not, we are not hoopers, we're not loud. Uh, Presbyterians tend to be very, uh, um, yeah, I don't want to say stale, but dry in a sense. Uh, Presbyterians, you can basically uh, time your Sunday dinner by a Presbyterian service because Presbyterians usually go to church, uh, usually depending on where you are in, in the United States, you can go to a Presbyterian service at 11 and you're out by 12. So by, uh, by the time that you get home, your dinner should be done because we are, are out of church. Uh, now, I am not, unfortunately, a typical Presbyterian. I, I love the Lord. I'm still not a hooper, but I, I do love the Lord. And, and I, uh, I'm I, I enjoy uh, being in, in, uh, around God's people and uh, I uh, try to add a little. I, I I try to add a little bit of and um, <clears throat> so I just pray this might be of something of interest for you. Um, how how I came about uh, laughter in the Bible is um, I I it, it, I'm not going to say it, it it was kind of interesting. I guess I I have always been one to love stories. Even as a, a child, I've always loved stories. And 
So if you read the Bible, the Bible is full of stories. And it is full of stories that you have drama, you have suspense, you have the love stories, you have all kinds of stories. But somewhere along in, in my journey, um, I had heard preachers say this before, in particular my preacher. He said, God must have really must have a sense of humor. And that has always stuck in, in the back of my mind. So as I began my journey uh, through seminary and, and later on after I uh, graduated out of seminary, that kind of resonated with me. And the work that I, um, the many sides of laughter or the many faces of laughter in the Bible was the topic that I chose. So now, uh, Coach Seals, if you, I, I guess everybody will see the screen, uh, what, what you put up the slides. So, okay. so if you just follow along with me, and I promise not to be, be long. I'll just <laughs> so take just I want Coach you Seals to put up the, okay. Okay, so this, this is the, the ground that I, I, I hope to cover. Uh, you can go to the next slide, uh, slide two. Okay, this one. laughter and a uh, high. Mike, I lost you. I'm back. I okay. was muted. Okay. Okay, laughter in the Bible is not. Laughter in, in the Bible is not about jokes with punchlines, uh, places in the Bible uh, in the Bible by mistake or uh, accident, meaningless passages of scripture. And it's not always necessarily funny. Mm -hmm. okay. We're having a problem with your audio. You're, you're, you're dragging in and out. Okay, let me. I don't know if it's a headset in the free. Your your screen started freezing. Up. It, let me see. Technology is always challenging sometimes. That's all right. We we experience it, so we're patient with it. And God have His way. I I can't get to my. I'm on my hot spot, so that might have something to do with my signal too. But, yeah. but let me try to persevere. Okay, yes, so uh, laughter in the Bible. Uh, and, and Okay, if you go to the next one. What well, laughter in the Bible is, okay. Laughter in the Bible is God's unique way of grabbing our attention. It's helpful in understanding God's purpose and God's will in our life. And it's a way to demonstrate of demonstrating God's sense of humor. God has a unique way of, of getting our attention. And just think for a minute. When it thunders, the thunder, the roar of the thunder and the lightning, it grabs our attention. When there's a wind, a heavy wind, it grabs our attention. Day and night, it grabs our attention. And so... God being the creator of all, God also uses humor in, uh, in grabbing our attention and making us pay attention to what it is that God will say to us. <clears throat> one, one of the ways that I, I would like to kind of introduce the faces of laughter in the Bible, if you think of the creation story, for instance, when God has created the heavens and the earth and then he has created um, man, and he gives Adam the, the word to name all of these things that I've created. So Adam, he begins to, to name these things, and without a blueprint or anything to go by, he has to name them. So I want you to use your imagination. Imagine what God must have been doing as he um, looks at Adam going about naming these things. So if it were you, 
if you were Adam, and if you were to to see uh, something with a, a duck bill in the front and uh, kind of a duck tail in the back, and you looked at it and it said, now what in the world can I name this thing? And then you you come in and, and you come up with something like a duck bill platypus. Well, you could say, well, okay, you see the duck bill, but what in the world is a platypus? Well, that's one one example of, of a face, uh, many faces of laughter in the Bible. And that, that God uses a unique way of using us so that in God's creation, God asked Adam to name all of these animals. But let's take it one step further. Not only did, did Adam name the animals, but think about how we today, how we use animals in our illustration of people. And, and, and I, I don't know how many times you might have said this to Coach Seals uh, when we were in high school of some of the students that were there. And you said, you might have had to say something to a student said, boy, you better stop acting like a monkey. <laughs> or, you, <laughs> or, you know, um, someone that, that might has, they might say, you as sly as a fox. Mm. Or you as tall as a giraffe, or you uh, you jump around like a rabbit. So, in God's unique way, God not only created all that is, mm -hmm. and God told Adam to name all that is, but it's the illustrations that we can begin to relate one with another and understand the different characteristics of how it is that people might be. Now, I'm quite sure that you could think of thousand, a thousand and one things of, of different animals and a person that you can associate an animal with. Uh, yeah, um, you might look at something and say, oh man, that is as sweet as a dove. Or soar like an eagle. So once again, the, that that's one of the, the many different faces. So, of the laughter in the Bible. So I move on now. And what I will do is, you don't have to put the screen up right now, coach. Okay. Um, but I want you to think of, and, and, a, and the best way that I could describe this is that all of us, we have heard uh, comedians. And when you think about comedians, whoever your, your favorite comedian might be, they, they have, most, of, most comedians, they have writers. And, and they, they write a, a particular a joke or skit or whatever for another comedian. And some comedians, they do their own work. But when you think of comedy, think about how and what comedy might do or say. So I, I was thinking about a, uh, a particular situation where I, I, I don't know. Now, I have not seen Kings of Comedy. If, if you have not seen Kings of Comedy, there's a part in, in Kings of Comedy where Steve Harvey is out on the stage. And this is not necessarily in the script, but he sees a young man and he has, uh, he's walking around and he tells the young man, sit down. And the young man, he's not sitting down, he's getting ready to go to the, uh, um, the stand and get some, uh, some something Fresh to eat. Yeah, yes, yeah. so and he tells him, sit down. And he said, and, and he's not doing it. And then he has on like a leather jacket and something else and, and he and he said, boy, what do you do? He said, you, you must have just got out of jail. And he said, well, I'm a computer technician. And, and so he said, you don't even know how to spell computer technician. So in that, in that going back and forth with this young man, that's a form of mockery. And he's mocking the, the young man. So in the Bible, there, there are 
uh, that's one of the faces and, and the faces, the many faces of laughter in the Bible, it has many different faces, but mockery is used um, in, in the Bible. So when you think about the faces of Bible, uh, um, the many faces of, in the Bible, you have to think of the different words that might resonate or come to mind um, in, in your examination of the Bible. So you have words like laughter or laugh. I don't know if, if many of you realize this, but uh, Isaac's name, uh, when, uh, remember the story about, uh, about Sarah and uh, Abraham, and she laughs. And when God tells her, oh, I'm, I'm an old lady. I, you, you got the wrong somebody telling me that I'm, I'm going to have a child. And, and she laughs. Well, the word Isaac translated from the Hebrew means laughter. And mm -hmm. so that, that, is, uh, that is one instance where, where you can actually see where laughter, it has a meaning. And not only does it, 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 it was not funny to her. It was the seriousness of God. And God, for whatever reason, God placed it in, in them to name their child laughter so that they can mm -hmm. remember. They can remember that in, in God's infinite wisdom, in God's infinite way, that it is the laughter of God that God, even in their own old age, they would become a parent to this child. So yes, yes. You, you, have, you have laughter as one of the faces. You have ridicule. And how many times you could think of in your life that someone might ridicule someone? Well, who do you think you are? And why do you think that you can And ridicule goes on and on and on and on and on. So ridicule is another face in the Bible. And, and in a minute, I'm going to give uh, three examples of, of, of stories that, that use uh, various faces. You have exaggerate. Jesus was good about exaggerating things so that people could understand them very clearly and mm -hmm. Jesus could make a point. You have mockery, you have jeer, and finally, you have taunt or tiny. So, having said that, now these are not the only faces, but, but just for uh, our time together, I just wanted to, to, to kind of point out these words are, are what's significant in understanding laughter in the Bible. When you, when you think about the various words and you think about how the words associate with the story, then you can see how laughter is used. Now remember, once again, laughter itself, laughter in the Bible, is not necessarily funny. In fact, I would go on to say that laughter in the Bible it can be funny, but usually when you see laughter in the Bible, it's the presence of God making a very specific and very clear point of what it is that God wants us to do, wants us to understand and the mighty act of God. So, it's just how the story is shaped. When you when you look at when you look at various stories, for instance, um, one of the things that I I wanted to also share with you, it's important that you have different tools, um, and by that I mean like uh, various translations of the Bible. One is I don't know how many of you use Bible Gateway, but got Bible Gateway is something that you can find on the internet. Okay. So yeah. Bible Gateway gives you different translations. So you have the King James Version, you have the Revised Standards, you have the International Version. You you just have all kinds of versions. Why that is important is, is that although I know a lot of us we read the King James Version and we uh, we say, well that that's what I'm gonna stick with. That's what I know. It's in your various translations that those words that I mentioned to you, like exaggeration or mockery or things, 
when you when you have those other tools there and you read it in different translations or you read it in a different voice if you if you read it in a different tense then sometimes the story it 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 takes on a, another meaning and and it comes to life uh for you uh so that you can understand oh wow that was really that was really funny that that now i hadn't thought about it that way so one of the things that uh one of the tools that i use is is the uh, bible gateway another tool that i use it's always good to have a dictionary close by because in case you run across a word that you're not sure about then you can you can find a uh, a definition of that word and so as you begin to unpack words that begins to give you another view of okay well once again i didn't think of it that way uh, this word this word has power you know when when i think of of mockery i would say before i i i start working on my dissertation when i think of mockery i could only think of mockery in the sense of what I remember growing up, how people used to mock someone. It, and, you know, unfortunately, how when a person has a, a handicap, um, whether that, that handicap might be a person may not be able to walk or walk correct in, in the way that we think, or that person might be uh, a sightless kind of person, and how we mock that person. I, I only could think of mockery in, in that sense because my I, I hadn't expanded my own thinking and and so in in discovery of the words then i could see it in, in in many different ways so it's important the bible gateway is a tool the dictionary is a tool now uh i would say um I don't know how many of you might use a, uh, a lexicon of some, some type, but a lexicon, uh, it, it translates words, like it can translate a word from English to Hebrew to Greek or vice versa from Greek Hebrew to English. So when you have a lexicon, and, and, and this is from my seminary training, and I, I can assure you that when I when I went to seminary, when I had to take Greek and Hebrew, I was not a scholar. In fact, I did not like neither one of the classes. And <laughs> it's only by the grace of God that I passed both of the classes. But but I between the two uh, original languages, I like I liked Hebrew better in the sense that Hebrew words they have they have such a um, well, Greek words do too, but both uh, Hebrew words for me, it has such a story behind it. So, for for instance, I always heard people talk about angels. They said, "Oh, well, that person is such an angel, and and uh, angel is close by." Well, when I when I was uh, in seminary and I heard heard the word angel, and I uh, and and I. Uh, Found out what the word angel means in Hebrew. It, uh, the word is a uh, melek, and uh, uh, melek is a uh, messenger. And and so I I thought to myself, so anytime that I see the word angel, particularly in the Old Testament, we're talking about messengers. But but in my mind, I'm thinking an uh, angel is, has wings and flies around and everything. Well. That could be, yes, and, but God has many messengers, and, and which means that God has many angels. And so, you know, our host, for instance, he is an angel. He's a, he's a melech. He, he is a messenger of God. His wife, she's a melech. She's a messenger of God. And, and God uses many different forms in, 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 in many different ways to once again, to get us to understand. So as we have these, these various tools that help us to understand 
the many different faces of the Bible. These are the things that help help us to open open up more uh, our understanding. So now, having said all of that, so let me let me give three three different examples of the Bible. The first story that I'm going to use, and I'm I'm going to paraphrase a, a lot of this, but but. I would ask that um, if you uh, if you're driving, I, I don't want you to try to write and drive, but if you can, go back. Do you want me to show those things. that slide with the three scriptures you're referencing? Oh, okay, yes, that that'll be fine. Okay. I think this is what you were looking at. Referring that, that, to that's exactly yes, yes. Okay. So, so the first, the first one is First Samuel seventeen, and and as I said, I'm going to paraphrase this, but let me let me tell you, let me tell you that this this particular scripture, the, the pace of laughter that it presents is taunting, taunting. Okay, this is the story about David. And Goliath. All of us know the story. We have probably heard the story repeatedly uh, from childhood, even up to now. And I'm sure that as we, those of us who are ministers, as we preach it, we preach it in different contexts and different ways. But it's a story. It's a story about Tati. I didn't realize this until after I, I really started diving into it a little bit deeper. But here's how the story is set up. And this is why the taunting is here. And, and why God, God, God is so good. God is awesome. So the first, the first way that taunting or taunting presents itself is if you remember, David's father told him that he wanted him to go and take his brothers who were in battle with Saul. He wanted him to take them food. And he told him, you know, what he needed to take to them and, and everything. It says, in, in, as you read along in there, that David was the youngest. Okay, so you would think, okay, well, all he asked him was to do is take food, and, and that's what he should have done. He, he should have been obedient, and he did. But did did uh, his father say, David, listen, your brothers are in battle, and I want you to go and fight with them? Nope. What he says is, is that I want you to take them to food, and, and I want you to bring back... Um, bring back something to show that they are, you know, they are okay. And that's all I want you to do. And then after you do that, they go back and tend to the sheep. So David goes. So remember that. Stick a, stick a pen in it um, as, as a placement. David goes and he takes the food to his brothers. And while David is there, he hears the voice of Goliath. And he's calling out to the, uh, the army of, of, of God, the ar army of Israel. Send me your best warrior. <laughs> if, if they kill me, my people will worship your God. But if I kill them, they will worship our God. And everybody is fearful. What does David do? David says basically these words. You mean to tell me y'all scared of him? <laughs> the, the, same, the same God that allowed me to kill a, a lion and a bear? Mm. It's the same God will, will allow me to kill this Philistine. Yes. And they look at, his brothers look at him like, listen, you the little brother. Dad told you to bring us food, and you need to go back home and tend to those sheep. Taunting. Hmm. Okay, so let's put a let's put a flag in that. David, I guess after going back and forth and, and back and forth and back and forth, 
David is found, he finally is, is presented to Saul and he convinces Saul that he could go up against this man, this great man of war. And this is what I, now this is the funny part of the story. So Saul, he's thinking to himself, listen, I'm, I'm going to let this boy go on and go out there. And he's going to get killed. I already know that. But he says to David, listen, I want you to put on my gear. And so he puts on his helmet. He puts on his, his mantle. And he puts on everything. And David, David has to stop and say, this stuff is too heavy. I, I can't fight in this. Mm. Saul, in his way, he was also taunting David. Taunting him because in his mind, he knew that David was going to get killed. And finally, we put a, a plug in that one. So the fourth instance, David goes up and he stands before Goliath. And Goliath said, you mean to tell me this is the best that y'all can do? Y'all send this boy, this little boy, to fight against me? And 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 Goliath, he, he doesn't even realize what, what's about to happen. But he's taunting him. He's like, okay, let's go, let's get this thing over with. That, let's just put an end to this. And and so you already know what happens in the story. David is victorious. So it's that face of the Bible where taunting is present. But it shows us that even in taunting, is that the laugh, laugh, the laugh, laugh goes to David, who is victory, who is victorious over Goliath. But it also shows us the power and the might of God Almighty. That even in our wildest imagination, when when the stakes are against us, when we are, are frail in our own way of thinking. His father, his brother, Goliath, and everybody else thought that this boy would die. But God had a purpose for him to give him victory over this great man of war. So that's the first face of laughter. The next face of laughter that I would like to share with you comes from the book of uh, the New Testament, the, the book of John, the eighth chapter. And this is the story uh, of faith of, of the Bible, uh, of, of, of laughter that pertains to ridicule. You know how, once again, how we ridicule people. We ridicule people because they're late. We ridicule people because they're slow. We ridicule people because they're not smart. We ridicule people because they may not look as good as someone else, but we have a way of ridiculing people. This too is a very familiar story. This is the story about the woman called in adultery. I have never, and one of these days I'll, I'll find out the answer to that. I'm like, how is it that she got caught in adultery? Who was looking? But nevertheless, the Bible tells us that th this woman was caught in adultery. And so she's brought before a crowd of people. And it's not just her, but it, it, it was her and whoever she was with. As we know, Jewish custom meant that because she was called in adultery, that she could be stoned to death. And so they were there and Jesus happened to be there too. And so as the story continues on, there's this dialogue and they wanted to trap Jesus and, 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 and really to, to 
to make Jesus look bad. But Jesus has a way of turning the, the whole table around on him. So basically, the ridicule is this. The woman is called in adultery. It has nothing to say about the man that's caught with her. That's ridicule. And they, they knew that Jesus knew what the law said. And so, so if Jesus would have answered it in a way in which he would have got the whole thing wrong, then they would have been able to probably throw the stone to Jesus as well. But it tells us that Jesus was there and he, he writes in, in the sand or the dirt. And we don't know what he said, but I always like to think that he probably either wrote down the names of the people that were standing there with stones and say, oh, I know something about him, 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 and him. And, uh, or he could have wrote down something to say, okay, well, after this is over with, I'm going to go visit this person, this person, this person. And whatever the case may be, he writes in the stand. And he asks them a question. He says, you who are without sin, cast the first stone. Go around on them. And in one of the versions that, of this that I read in the Bible, it, it says that it was an older man that dropped his rock first, or his stone first, followed by uh, everyone else to start dropping, dropping their rocks. And then he looks up and he says, okay, well, woman, where are your accusers? And seeing none, he says to her, go and sin no more. So what do we learn about this ridicule? <laughs> I, th this story is so fascinating. It's that not only is she let off the hook and Jesus says go sin no more Jesus gives her another chance as only Jesus can do Jesus gives us another chance it, it, that, that's one thing that we can hold up but another thing that we, we learn from this ridicule is that it gives us an opportunity to stop looking at how we accuse others and start looking at ourselves and so, and so that's a, a powerful impact. And so, once again, as we look at laughter in the Bible, laughter in the Bible is not so much about the humorous side of it. it there are things that make us laugh. Like I, I can think of when every time when I think about uh, Peter getting out of the boat and walking to Jesus, and then he she sings and starts to scream. I, I know that at some point. After all was said and done, and he got to dry land, and they were having food and all of that kind of stuff, I know the rest of the disciples that they just laughed at him and said, "Why? Why did you? What made you think that you could get out the boat and go walk on the water? Now, only Jesus could do that. Why? Now, I know that they laughed at him, and it was just really funny. And and Peter probably could just just say this again. Well. Hey, I tried, but but he the, the laughter part of the Bible is how God allows us to look at ourselves, to look at someone who was called in adultery, who was wrong according to the law, but Jesus turns the table around and he gets everyone else to look at their own sinfulness, and that's how laughter can be used. And finally, the last story that I would like to use is a, a face of the Bible called irony. Irony is, is how something, it does, it starts off one way, but then it, something else happens all together. It, it, it's, a, it, it's a point to be made. And so it comes from Numbers to 22nd. Num numbers 22 rather and I'm, I'm going to paraphrase this so 
you remember the story of, of the man or the general who had leprosy. And he, he was a, a great general. And the Bible tells us that he, 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 he was a very powerful man. But the one thing that was wrong with him in his life is, is that he had leprosy. And, and so he, you know, he had to deal with that. And so he goes to the king and he, and he talks to the king about this. And he says, well, I don't, I, you know, I'm the king, but I really can't help you. And, and so, you know, there, there are some places that you can go and, and there's someone that you can't talk to. And so he goes on the journey and he hears about Elijah and he, he goes on this journey and, and basically when he gets to the home of Elijah, Elijah's servant comes to the door and he says, well, He's busy right now, but this is what he told me to tell you to do. Go to the River Jordan and dip yourself in the River Jordan. And, and so when you dip yourself in the River Jordan, you will be made clean. This general, he's upset. It's like, you mean tell me I rode all of this way and the person that I needed to talk to, he sends you to the door to talk to me, to tell me to go into a nasty river? I... <laughs> please well I guess he thought about it and he went to he goes to the river Jordan and when he goes to the river Jordan the Bible tells us that he dips himself in the river the first time nothing happens next time nothing happens and at the seven times when he comes up he has skin like a newborn baby Skin like a child. The irony of that is that you go into a nasty river, but you come out clean and pure. That's the irony. And that's how, how God works it, with, with laughter in the Bible. It's like God takes, takes some of the strangest coincidences. A woman in her own old age and her husband who say we can't have children and then God blesses them with a child and they named the child Isaac which means laughter David a little boy uh, compared to the man the strong man of, uh, who is in battle he goes in battle with that the odds are against him but God gives him the victory gives David the victory the woman called in adultery who was called in Rome, but Jesus takes the circumstances and turn them around. And instead of looking at her and stoning her, he gets them to look at their own sinfulness. And this man who thinks, I don't belong in a dirty river, but God takes that dirty river to clean not only the outside, but to clean the inside. And so that's the that's the power of laughter in the, in the Bible, you know. I don't expect anyone to probably a, approach scriptures the way that I might look at them, but I do suggest that at, in our approach of the scriptures, that we allow the scriptures to invite us to take a, a strong look at them in many different ways. There are many facets of God. God is not just one dimensional. God is multi-dimensional. And laughter is one of those dimensions. And laughter is a way that it, it opened us to, uh, to various understanding of, of the, the, the nature and the love and the ability of God. I, I thank you for your time and I, I thank you for your presence. Amen. Amen. Um, Mike, I want to thank you so very much for elaborating on the key points that you shared with us tonight. And I want to go back to some of that real quick and then open it up to our listening audience. The key points about God's unique way of grabbing our attention. I had never thought about it 
uh, in the many faces that you described. And so that that is a very enlightening experience to, to know that that here you you've identified these different I think it's here um, the different types of laughter the different kinds of faces the different kinds of experiences we have with the meaning of the words and and you, I love this illustration that you have um, and and I think this is uh, Matthew. Uh, yes, Matthew 7 and 3, 3 through 5. Here, let me help you take that, that speck out of your eye. <laughs> and so um, there's some irony in that because, and, and he's laughing at us because we're so busy criticizing others, we don't see our own faults. And so you have done a great job in helping me to understand how simplistic God makes the word if we're willing to listen. And actually he's mocking us. He's, he's ridiculing us uh, and, and our spirit, you know, our natural flesh is always mocking, mocking God because it doesn't want you to hear what God is saying. And so in the laughter and the ridicules and, and, and the being accusatory of other people, we're discovering that that it's not always the behavior of God as much as it is the behavior of us. And, and how God is showing us uh, when you step out of your way ourselves and allow him, he shows you himself. And that's what I saw in this mockery and in the, in the, in the relationship. But that's insulting. I'm your brother and I'm going to go take you some food and come back and give you a report. But I killed a lion. I killed a bear. <laughs> But you're going to tell me I can't fight. So I, the point is well taken. I think it's a unique way of presenting uh, another level of teaching. And I open it up for any other comments. And, and thank you so very much. Uh, I just wanted to let you know I was paying attention and I understood. Uh, but I had never approached it this way. So that gives me another tool in my toolbox uh, to, as I start reading and teaching more of how these, uh, how the laughter, the, the mockery, the exaggeration uh, of how God gets our attention and how he shows us uh, our fleshly ways as well and how he shows and reveals his, his marvelous glory. Um, any comments from anybody? Stan, I saw you sitting up. So Stan is my prayer partner. And I had a question for you once we get, once we other people, I just had a quick question, but I wanted other people to chime in. Go ahead, take your phones off mute though. Well, thanks, Mike, for uh, your time and uh, sharing laughter. We need to we need to laugh more, but a lot of times I'm thinking in our lives that things happen and we have a serious look and feeling about it. And it takes a it's not until everything is over that you can laugh about it. And mm -hmm. uh, that 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 when we think back on our life and. And so God has a sense of humor. So that is, yeah. that is great. And Absolutely. we need to laugh more when we think back on all that has happened. And the only, <laughs> the only person, the only one around is going to be him. And I could tell you some stories, but I know a lot of the stories is just between him and I. Because no. we don't want to put ourselves to, because other people will judge you. But God, God is has a sense of humor, and just keep living. Yes, and you'll see it. <laughs> yes, absolutely. And that's why that's also why we tell our uh, our kids. You know, we try to tell them the proper way to do things, and then because I think about minds, because they used to run them. You know, you were trying to keep them bills down, and they running that water, running that water. And then I said, we can't wait till they get big enough so I can come to their house and run that water. So it's a sense of humor. Yeah. So yes. thank you for sharing. Thank you. Anyone else got uh, any comments or thoughts or expressions they'd like to share? Hallelujah. My, my wife is quiet tonight. <laughs> She's probably resting. Yeah, I wouldn't. It's it's eight o'clock almost. So yeah, uh, let me let me throw this at you and ask you a, a question, because I was curious because I've never 
studied it this way. And so I, I and I love teaching. So this would give me a whole nother avenue to start looking and make comparisons of, of how how the scripture reveals these these human characteristics as well as from a spiritual aspect. But what led you to take up this this learning or this research to do this? What was it? Uh, because it's, it is kind of, it is different. It, I mean, it takes you to a place of humanity that you have to examine yourself because it's imagine somebody telling you, I'm going to cure you, uh, but I want you to go walk over there and get, and he knew it was the Nassus River. And, and you, you want me to do what? Like you said, that's like, oh man, come here, that's an insult. I've come this far, you won't even see me and you'll tell me you're going to get in the dirty water. That, that's insulting. But that's how we oftentimes can take I had an experience in my spirit, man, this morning. <laughs> Somebody sent me some money, right? And I needed it. I needed this little money, right? It was a lot. And, and I was grateful. <laughs> and I said, man, I said, God, you know what? I need some more money. And before, before I could finish it, I could hear in my spirit, have you said thank you? If, I, if you didn't get what I just sent you, stop complaining and be grateful because I'll send you more. It's in your humility that, that God reveals himself to us and shows us our shame. And he's laughing at us. That's the, I, a lot of this is Jesus is laughing. He said, I've got the king of kings, this young David, who's going to be a mighty king. And y'all laughing at him. And I'm laughing at you. <laughs> I'm really mocking you. And I'm exaggerating his stories till you get to the point to understand that he runs to, I'm with the army of the Lord. Just his word. Release the power to kill yes. this, this giant yes. that's called Goliath. And so the interpretation of being able to learn from you how to look at this, uh, and thank you for the slides, because I, <laughs> I will use it to try and find more analogies that, that link to it, uh, because each one of those stories about how we judge people and, and forget where God brought us from uh, is, the, is the story of, of the woman that was caught in sin. And I've always wondered, why didn't they, brothers, I, I come in and God didn't call us out. Well, he did. He called us out because most of the men that were ready to throw the stones, they were the one throwing the stones and they were the one that was sinful. He said, if you, if you were out sin, you'd be the first to throw the stone. And so he, while he's mocking <laughs> and criticizing, and we're asking that question because I never found the answer to that, Mike. I never found... First of all, who reported it <laughs> that she That's was right. being an adulteress? And, 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 and where was the man? That's right. And all the men are guilty that have that in their minds. Because back in, if we go back in that age, our women were not treated well at all. Right. You know, and so I thank man. you for the illustrations. Because um, yes. if you if you been talking to my wife, she, she'd have crossed the line. <laughs> oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> I, I have to pray for her. Uh, just ask God, help her, help her, Jesus. You know, well, Pastor Michael, uh, I thank you for being on today. I, I'm. It, it was really a, a good. I heard bits and pieces because I was in and out. But laughter is good for the soul, and I thank God for you to bringing the points that you did to um, face where people can understand that you know we all are different and we see the Word of God differently. But you know, He uses everyone. He uses every person to plant seeds and yes. how he gives the increase. One may water, one may give, you know, another profound word. And I thank God tonight for that word and how he began to use every person. Hallelujah. During these last and evil days. So I thank God for that word. And yes, yes, women are still being treated unfairly. Unfortunately. <laughs> All right now. You're right. Amen. Don't get us Amen. Amen. But, Amen. But, but, but to answer answer your question, Coach, um, is is that I I I guess you know the, the process, and I've shared with you how long it took me to actually to earn the the uh, my uh, doctorate. Um, I um I I started the journey back in the eighties, and mm -hmm. usually when a person uh, goes to a doctorate program, they um. They enroll in a school and they do whatever, you know, with the exception of being, you know, like an MD or something like that. And they have to go to school forever. But it took me 
it took me from the latter part of the 80s up to now to finally to, to, to get my dissertation, which, which you probably could have, I could have done maybe in two or three years. And so the journey, the journey was a long journey, but but what, what piqued my interest was is that number one is that yes, my grandmother and my mother, uh, and, and both of them were very humorous. Uh, and, um, and then I have always had the love of, of, of different stories. And, and it, it could be from a children's story to just a story in general. And um, so the, in, in, in reading the Bible, once again, the Bible is full of stories. And, and it's not just humorous stories, but just stories in general. Uh, that that was another thing, and I and and I have always um, I had um, a mind of imagination. Uh, in that, you know, I I I don't look at things in just like okay, well, this is just it's just this way. I I I have always tried to look at things in in a broader sense, and and so in in studying the Bible. It, it allows you to do that. It, it you know, the, the broader sense of, of what God attended, it, it's like, wow, this is, this is vastness. You know, mm -hmm. when he, when he says, when he says to Abraham, you know, look at the stars in heaven and it, as many as, as you can see, it's even more beyond that. <laughs> you, you, you'll never know how many stars there are. And so it's, it's just vastness. And, and finally, I, I think that I have been around situations where, where my, my brother Stanley uh, just mentioned is that you, you have to look at life sometimes and you have to learn how to not always be bitter by life, but, but you have to find the joys and, and the things that make you laugh. And God wants us to laugh. God, God wants us to feel good. God didn't put us on, on this, on this uh, terrain called earth. To, to just to walk around and be bitter souls. God wants us to have joy and the fullness. And, and God gives us many different things. And God gives us the gift of laughter. Laughter is good for the soul. It, it, it unlocks the, 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 the things in our brain that, that help us so that we won't feel as tense or, or we, we won't you know, go off the deep end. Sometimes people, we're so serious about things that we, we forget that you know, we 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 are people of many many different dimensions. So so it it, it was a, a, a journey, and I think that that God orchestrated in me that I go on the journey that I did in order to get to the place that He wanted me to be. Because had I was I able to get a doctorate earlier in my life, then it probably would have been on a whole different subject area. But I, I remember, and this this is one of the things that I can laugh. I remember when I was in seminary. Uh, and when I when I was in seminary, one of my seminary professors, who was a very a scholarly man, and and I respected him, he walks up to me one day and he says, "Michael, you have a very unique way of making the complicated. You you have a way of, of looking at it and making it very simplistic." He said, "That is truly a gift," and I'm thinking to did he just curse me out or what? <laughs> so so I, I'm thinking to myself, okay. So so I but I I, I came to, to understand that that some some things in life they are very compl complicated and complex. But then when you can break it down so that people can understand it and and everyday people can understand it, that's a blessing. And and so that has blessed me. Uh, in my, in my ministry throughout the years that I've been been pastoring, uh, is that I I have had people in, in my congregations to come tell me, you make the Bible so understandable. I I, I really appreciate that. That is a blessing to me. That Amen. that when when they say things like that. Amen. Amen. Well, I surely appreciate you, uh, Brother Stan, or anyone else having closing thoughts as eight oh six. Um, I, I do want to say I thank you for sharing uh, that lesson. I thank you for the research. I thank you that you never quit. You never gave up. You kept persevering. You kept going through and, and was determined 
to get that doctor's degree. Um, one of the things I say to you unashamedly to all of us is one of the things I've learned in my life is how God takes all of us as broken pieces to make be beautiful mosaic tiles, beautiful artwork, beautiful human beings that were, were broken, that, that all of us come through something. And all of us don't teach the same. We don't sing the same. But when we're teaching God's word, there's something that you should be able to hear when God is involved. And, and I just want you to know, Mike, I truly hear another way of looking at the Bible because I, I always try to understand the different, because some congregations you would go to, um, they may not sound like that's where you belong. Um, and go to another place where you feel more received. God has a place for everybody. It doesn't mean that he doesn't love you. He knows what you need. And the teaching you give breaks it down to help people to understand. And that's part of the problem, I think, in the body of Christ universally. And you've been pastoring for a long time across different parts of the country. There's a, a huge void. And um, uh, my prayer partner, Stanley, there, um, we share a lot of talk and discussions in prayer about the absence of prayer in the church and particularly with leaders of the church and the absence of sound teaching of the gospels and the Bible itself, Old or New Testament, that people just don't know. And so if you're not a hooter and you grew a Baptist, they don't like you and me the way we teach because my wife gets to teach and she's a hooter. She, and <laughs> she'll come with that fire. But it's, it's helped us to grow. And I think that's what God is saying. I want you to hear my voice. I remember once my uh, uh, doctor, Pastor um, Askew and Stan and Brother Thomas, and I'm not sure who the, uh, the 815 is. I haven't figured out who 815 is, but we're glad you stuck in there. Might be us. Brother Bernice. It may be. Um, but I just want, want all of you to know that God is showing us in this, in this era to see beyond ourselves, see beyond the denominationalism. Um, what's the guy that has that huge church oh, in California, it's in a stadium, oh, what's his name? I know it's on tip of my tongue, Pastor. Oh my God. And he has, and, and, he, and he doesn't, he doesn't, have, he doesn't have that fiery sound and it's, it's more processed. But he got 50,000 people in his church. And you can't tell me that's not God that's drawing people to hear the word of God. So we can't put people in a basket and say, everybody, it's the only way you're going to learn. And what I've learned to, to, to appreciate. Oh, yeah, Osteen. Uh, Osteen. Thank you, babe. Um, Pastor Osteen, his teaching is different than most teachings I've been exposed to. His preaching style is different, but what you can hear and what I heard today is confirmation that God speaks. And, and so you are a teacher. You, you're not just a preacher, pastor. You're a teacher of God's word. And, and you break it down where you can make it so simplistic that I'm, I'm thinking, how did I miss that analogy? I've been doing this teaching for 30 years. I ain't never looked at it that way. A whole nother, hey, I got this, this pair of glasses here. And there's another one up here somewhere. <laughs> so I got some more up here. So it's a lot of ways. <laughs> My wife gave these to me with the, with the lights on them. So all you right. need some help, baby. <laughs> and so what am I saying to all of us that are listening? That, that God is speaking to the world through so many different ways, so many different avenues. And he's laughing at us because we won't return to him. And over almost 600,000 600, people have died because we have mocked God, because we don't think enough of somebody to put a simple mask on your face mm. that could save somebody's life. life. Mm. Mm. I mean, that that is... I'm not going to put a mask on, but I'm going to criticize you and talk about you and insult you and you and you, but maybe I'm spreading the disease. And God is showing us. All he wants us to do is put a mask on and think about your, love your neighbors 
love the Lord your God with all your heart and love your neighbors as yourself. And you can't do that without loving God. It takes that relationship. So I want to tell you, thank you for your illustrations. Thank you. Thank you for the PowerPoint slides, um, especially for the laughter. I'm going to try and find some scriptures to line that up when I teach next Tuesday about the seed. <laughs> well, the hey, listen, I'm, I'm, I'm only a phone call away. You can always run stuff by me. I'm, hey, I'm I'd be glad to and, and have you on and, and want you to listen in one day uh, and give me some pointers. Um, because it's about learning. It's, we never get to the place that we should know, think we know it all. And I'm far beyond that. I'm still searching for, for am I doing it your way, God? And that you will be glorified on this podcast. Now, we don't have a big following. We're not trying to um, do it the any, way, any other way, but one step at a time. So God bless you. Thank you so much. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for uh, Pastor Dr. Michael Askew. We thank you, God, for how you used them tonight, how you simplified the word in laughter, oh God, how you've taken laughter and laughing, laughing, oh God, how you've helped us to understand what it means to taunt and to exaggerate, to ridicule, to jeer, to mock. Lord, we thank you that you give us those illustrations. They fit in the mind of the thinking of the parables that line up with the humanity of man and the simplicity of this world alongside, and that's what parables are, lined up alongside the truth of your word in the spiritual realm. So I thank you for the, the, as the pastor said to him and his theology teacher shared with him, you have a way, you have a gift of teaching that can take the, some of the most complex areas and help us to see how God is laughing at us and we're laughing at other people and God is showing us to humble ourselves and to recognize the gifts and to know that God has so many different ways to reach us. So I thank you, Brother Thomas Anderson. I thank you, Elder Jennifer Seals. I thank you, uh, Brother Stanley. And, and also for our guests on, uh, I think, Sister Parham, 8775. And I thank you, Doc, for your humility and your kindness and your thoughtful. Take the time out to be on this podcast with me and to reconnect with me after all these years. And the kind words you've said every time we've talked. Uh, sometimes we don't realize the impact we have. And I pray that God would just reveal and open doors and windows of opportunity for you to teach more, uh, not just at your, your school, uh, not at your, your church, but, but to take this word and help younger people to understand and simplify it for them in Jesus' name. I thank you for David Holmes being on and Keith Cross being on. And we praise your name, Father, for what we've learned tonight. We give you all the praise, honor, and glory. We'll be on next week. Keith Cross will be our guest next week. So I hope you join him in and, and, and sit in with him. He is part of the Rotary Club of, of Chicago, Illinois. Um, it's a huge organization. They do quite a bit of, of social services across the country and outside the country. And he's going to share some of the work that they're doing, especially during the pandemic and post-pandemic, and trying to help people get their lives back together. So he'll be our guest speaker uh, he's not a minister, but he's a brother who loves helping people. And he's also a former Hyde Park Career Academy student. So I'm blessed to be in the company with these uh, older men that I grew up with <laughs> that helped me to be a better teacher, helped me to be yes. a better human being because I learned to hear their hearts. And I'm so grateful uh, that something was said and done that still connects us after all these years, Mike. Thank you, Doc. We appreciate you. God bless everybody. Uh, we'll be Thank back you. on Tuesday at 2 o'clock in the afternoon, 2 o'clock next Tuesday, uh, for our Bible class on um, Smith Wigglesworth on faith, on faith. God All bless right. you. Peace of God be with everybody. I'll send this Peace. to you later tonight or tomorrow. You'll get the recording and the right. uh, blog page. God bless. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. You're welcome.